worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is who you are Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are 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 Oh, that is who you are 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 You are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Good morning, Family Church. Alejandro here. 
Um, this morning, I just wanna, wanted to help out with the prayer focus, and today I want to talk about uh, revival. And some of the things I'm going to mention this morning are, um, are some of the things that fall into place when revival is happening or just before it's about to occur in our lives. So right now, my prayer for you guys is that wh- whoever's listening, whoever's watching, wherever you are at right now, I just pray that you come before the Lord and you just spend time in his presence and, and that you just seek the Holy Spirit throughout this time as, as this prayer um, un- unveils before our very eyes. Thank you. So uh, a little bit about revival is that in the scripture it says, will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? It says that in the book of Psalms 85, 6. And uh, as I continue to read, it says, pray for the Holy Spirit to move in people's hearts and bring renewed spiritual favor. Pray that believers of Christ will have a passion for him and his word, right? Um, we'll pray for our pastors, our teachers, and the church leaders to stay true to God's word and his teachings, and then this morning, uh, I come in agreement with the Holy Spirit and, and say, Father God, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit to move in our, in our hearts and bring um, a, a, a renewed spirit for you, Lord. Um, it says, will you not revive us again? May, may revival begin in our community, but first may it begin in our hearts, right? And uh, reveal what is stealing our love and attention from you, God, to replace that with, with, uh, with the way so that we can um, focus back to you. Remove any... any uh, uh, false gods from our lives. Shift us away from lukewarm faith, Lord, that, that, um, that you may um, lighten us a, a passionate and all-consuming belief in you. Like it says in Revelation 3.16, awaken us in a deeper thirst and a hunger for you, Father God. Um, tear down all the walls of our hearts that we may see the truth and it may set us free. Stir the pastors in our community into deeper devotion to you, Lord, and move through their faithful teaching of the word to bring souls dedicated in faith to you, Father God. I wrote down this morning as well that, um, that Jesus may have his way in our hearts and lives and launch revival that stretches across the community and the nation. This morning, um, my cry out was for the Holy Spirit to come like a mighty flood into the hearts of our, of our people. Those who are carved by your name, Lord, may our hearts be washed by the water of the word and the purifying light of the Holy Spirit to cleanse our thoughts this morning, Father God. Wash the hearts and purify the minds of those who are a part of the church, which is your body. Lord, we pray that you would purify the hearts and minds of all our people so that our thoughts are ever turned toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And we may, as individual members, also as a body of believers, learn to seek you throughout, throughout all the trials and tribulations that come across us, Father God. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention as I'm reading and, and, and saying these prayers is that um, wherever you're at right now, I encourage you to stand up and, and imagine yourself drawing a circle on the floor. And I just want you to, to imagine yourself stepping into that circle. Now, revival starts within that circle. It starts with you. When, when, when you start to, to go through the process of wanting to see revival, there will, there will be some changes. And, and as it starts with you, everyone you encounter, the, your, your, your church members, your, 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 people, your family members, they will see that and it will slowly but surely start to branch off onto them. We must first live by example, you know. And so um, in the book of Psalms 85, 6 that I read earlier, um, it said, will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Now, I believe the psalmist is asking God for revival so that once again, people can rejoice in God. Where does revival begin, you ask? And it says, I had wrote down, if you're a believer, that um, we, we have already um, been vived. So there's the revive. We have been vived, right? God brought us back to life in him, in Christ. When, when that occurs, therefore, after, then the revival can happen. Right, but we we first must be reborn in Christ in order for the revival to happen. And in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, I wrote down that it says, "If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and pray and seek the face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will rejoice and forgive their sins and heal their land." See, I believe that Solomon is speaking in, in a position where he wants uh, a, a turning from their wicked ways. The word repent essentially means to turn around and go the other way. Right. So it is a turning away from sin and a turning toward God that that that's a, a very crucial step when we want to see revival happen. That must happen first. We must turn from our wicked ways and turn from sin and pivot our cross and walk towards the father, walk towards God. And the closer we get to him, the farther we get away from our past sin and the closer that we are arriving to the revival that we are asking God to provide for us in our community. 
So let me put it this way, a pastor of mine, he said, it takes a man of God speaking the word of God with the spirit of God to make children of God for the glory of God. See, it's not a, 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 a man that can bring revival. It's not, it's not us that brings it, but it's God and God alone. And he is the, he is the, um, the, the dominion, the domain. He is the main piece uh, that we need in order to do these things. And, and in that, in that uh, saying that I said, you, you can put woman in that as well. It, it takes a woman of God speaking the, the word of God to reach the children of God. You know, it goes vice versa. But God, at the end of the day, is the thing that we need in order to make these things happen. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in, uh, earlier I had read uh, Psalms 51.10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And I believe that in, in perhaps one of the greatest prayers of repentance in the scripture, right, when David repented of his adultery with Bathsheba and uh, the murder of her husband, Uriah, he prayed for God to create in him a clean heart, right, and, and that his spirit might be renewed within him. The cleansing of the heart and the renewing of the spirit solely depend on God, and God alone is the one who renews our minds, says in Romans 12:2. So with all this being said, guys, I, I, I want to uh, close with this. It says, um, um, I wrote down, is your church seeking revival? Are you seeking revival? If so, I encourage you to draw that circle and, and allow it to start with you, with you. Allow that revival to happen in your heart and in your mind, in your household, before, before anywhere else, right? Align yourself to where, where you know that God is will is being done in, in your life. And when you do that, it, it'll start to branch off like... Like, like we can't imagine, and revival will be unveiling before our very own eyes. So I encourage you guys, once this starts to happen, we will be able to, 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 to uh, spread to those around us, and then to our church, and then even outward into our community, and hopefully reaching the streets and reaching the lost. So revival is a huge key for us this morning. I thank you guys for joining us here at Family, uh, Journey Church, and um, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will meet your very needs right now financially, physically, emotionally. I just pray that your household will be covered in the blood of Christ this morning. Thank you, guys.
worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up; it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and your soul. heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord so bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name Bless the Lord Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, Lord I worship your holy name, Lord I worship your holy name. Once again, it's good to be here. It is so good to hear from various people share the Lord, how the Lord spoke to them some several years ago. I have several Bible verses that mean so much to me, and one that always comes to my mind is found in Romans 15, 4, which I've said many times before. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And that word hope is confidence, that we might have confidence and rest assured on it. There are many examples in the Old Testament for us to learn more and more for a successful daily life as Christians. One such example to me is found in Asa, in the book of Second Chronicles. It is... Uh, uh, 
a, a great section of scripture. You know, you hear about Daniel, you hear about uh, David and Samuel and, and all the rest of them, and they're all great stories. But sometimes we pass over a story like Asa that really tells us about ourselves and our Christian life. And that's one example that speaks out to me. It's found in Second Chronicles 14 through 16 and other places in Scripture too. Asa was a king, king in Judah. His father was Abijah, also the king of Judah, right before him, until he died, and then his son Asa became king. What stands out to me about that is Asa was a wicked man. He was not a believer, well, not really a Christian. Abijah was a wicked king, but he had a son. His son Asa was a king who followed the Lord God. In Second Chronicles 14, verse 1, it says, Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa his son reigned in his place. In his, in his days the land had rest or peace for ten years. And Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. His role model was King David. He was uh, following what King David taught and believed. King Asa changed a lot of things in, in Judah. His father Abijah had put in practice idols and, and uh, high places and, and uh, people would bow down to them and worship them. And, uh, but Asa comes along, King Asa, when he took over, wasn't long, he tore them all down and he cleansed the temple. Reminds me so much of how that we as Christians need to take time from, quite often and cleanse the body of, our, of the temple, our bodies, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. A lot of things we get sidetracked in. But the, he commanded the people of Judah to seek the Lord and to obey God's laws. Under his leadership, the nation Judah prospered. At that time, he had an army of over 500,000 faithful, valiant men. The, this army was built during a time of great peace in Judah. It says in the seventh verse, in Second Chronicles 14, And he said to Judah, Let us build these cities and surround them with walls and towers, gates and bars. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he has given us peace on every side. So they built and prospered. So many people wish they could do better and prosper. I believe that one of the secrets is being right with the Lord and honor him and God prospers the body of believers. You know, so Asa, you know, is very happy, but something comes along in, in verses 9 through 10. There's a nation called the Ethiop Ethiopians. We're a mighty people and a mighty army, over a million people, men in, in the Ethiopian army. And they were twice the size of Asa's army. And they uh, make a threat. They make some trouble for him, uh, for Asa. And things start to go a little bit off the beat. Um, so they decide to, to do something about it. So Asa goes to prayer. Asa cries out to God in chapter 14 and verse 11. When they were confronted with all these uh, chariots and soldiers, they started to panic a little bit from Ethiopia. They started to panic a little bit. And uh, he says, and Asa, in verse 11, says, And Asa, the king, cried out to the Lord his God, O Lord, there is none like you to help between the mighty and the weak. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rely on you. And in your name we have came against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let not man prevail against us. And then it says in verse 12, 
So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And so there was great joy and happiness because God answered the prayer, and God came to their aid, and God blessed them, and the enemy was defeated. In, in chapter 15, there are various verses. Asa was encouraged and happy, and there were great times of peace and joy. And there was a lot of uh, excitement amongst the people. And then chapter 16. Chapter 16 comes along, and there's uh, Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah because he was jealous. You see, the nation was divided. There was, uh, Is uh, there was Dr uh, Israel and Judah, the 12 tribes. Israel had 10 tribes. Judah had two. And Asa was king of Judah. And so they were vastly outnumbered. But Basha was jealous of Asa, Asa because a lot of the people from the northern kingdom, which was Israel, was going down to Judah because they heard how that they were honoring the Lord. And some of the people, a lot of the people, wanted to be in on that. So they went to, to Judah. So Asa gets scared calls on another king to help him fight Israel, Ben-Hadad. King of Syria paid, paid them, he paid them big time for his help. And he asked them to intercede and, and defeat Israel. So then, make a long story short, Israel fled back home and it appeared all worked out okay. But we see in chapter 16 something that we uh, kind of forget once in a while. It says, In the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built a city. Then Asa took silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the king's house and sent them to ben Hadad, king of Syria, who lived in Damascus, saying, There is a covenant between me and you and and our dads got along great and so forth. And so uh, Ben-Hadad accepted the big payoff to join Asa to fight against Israel. And uh, so now he's happy that he's got another king on his side. And he thinks it's going to be just wonderful. But in, we see in chapter 16, verses 7, it says, At that time Hanani, the seer, or prophet of God, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Syria and did not rely on the Lord your God, the army of the king of, of Assyria has escaped you. Were not the Ethiopians and the Libyans a huge army? Yeah, they were over a million. With, your, with very many chariots and horsemen, Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he gave them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord, here's something to remember, for the, Lord, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. You have done foolishly in this, for from now on you will have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer, or with the prophet, and put him in the stocks in prison, for he was in a rage with him because of this. Asa inflicted cruelties upon some of the other people at the same time. And that's the point of the whole thing. Asa turned from God and started to rely on his own wisdom, his own way of life. I can handle this. I got good ideas. Uh, I'm a king, I can do it this way and do it that way. And he left the Lord out. So as I look at this story, Asa stopped praying. Have you stopped praying when you face problems? Where do you look? Where do you go? Remember the victory that God gave you at different times, how he blessed? And then we start to drift. We, we become conceited. We become pride. We become proud. We become indifferent toward the Word of God a little bit, 
yes, I believe in God. I believe this. I believe that. But I have this idea, and God has taught me to do it this way, so I'm going to do it this way and make our own plans and go at it the wrong way. But we see chapter 16, 17 through 10, where, where we read again, uh, as things go on in, in his life, that things are not going good. Hananiah, the seer, he comes and he tells, and then a verse, I think, that tells him about what's going to be taking place. A verse I think we need to all remember is in chapter 15, verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa, Azariah the prophet, and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. God wants our obedience. God wants us to honor him. He has done so much for us, and we need to respond and praise and worship and, and pray and ask him and tell him what's bothering us. You know, God will bless those who follow him. And, you know, you think about the book of Romans, for instance, in chapter 8, where it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You know, Asa should have remembered that. What can separate us from God? You know, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So I plead with you today, remove that which is hindering your time with the Lord. You're too busy doing something else. You think that you can take care of this later. You know, remove it from your life. You know, honor the Lord. You know, restore your altar. My altar? Yeah, the place where you met the Lord and, and prayed and, and talked and read the Word of God and so forth. Some homes need to have that restored. People, some people need to have that altar, that time with God, restored in their lives. And God was, is waiting for you to do that. Read God's word. Pray together. Asa, Asa, King Asa, the great man that he was, and all the success that he had, stopped praying. He stopped seeking God. And pride set in. And the coldness stepped in. And, and, and he stopped reading the word. He started listening to people. You know, it's my life to live. I'm going to live it the way I want to. Uh, I have ideas too. And I believe in God, but this is my life. And I'm going to do the best I can. You know, I know what's best for me. Working out his own plans. I have this and, and uh, this is the way it's going to be. Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, the word of God will be the flashlight in this dark, troubling times that we are living in right now, today. Psalm 107, verse 2. People say, they, people can make up their own mind. I don't need to say something. Psalm 107, verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It's time for us to speak up. It's time for us to take that stand and stand tall for Christ. You know, there's a little song that we I sang, not I sang, we all sang, as a, in junior church years and years and years ago. You know, um, it goes like, read your Bible, pray every day, read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow, grow, grow. And that's my message to you. Stay in the Word of God and read your Bible. Meditate in the Word of God. Don't be swayed by others. You know, you'll start going on human wisdom once again. And God's Word is settled forever in heaven. The grass will wither, the flower will fade, but the Word of our God shall stand forever. Joshua 1, 
Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have not I commanded you? Be strong. That be strong is don't be swayed. Don't be impressed by others, you know. Uh, don't be swayed in this direction. Stick to what God's word says and where it stands. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You know, there's a verse that I think of many times. It's in Proverbs 4, 5, where it says wisdom, it talks about wisdom. Get wisdom, get insight. And then it says, do not forget. Do not ignore or turn away from the words of my mouth. That's what God says. You know, get wisdom, get understanding, but don't forget or nor turn away from his word. You will fail. You will have misery and hardship and all kinds of hard time and fear that's gripping so many today. Trust God's word. He is the one in control. You know one thing I have noticed on the newscast? I never hear anyone mention, ask God. Let's pray. Nothing like that. But he's the only one that can help us. And believe it or not, he is in total control. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.